Good morning, good morning, praise God. Are there any testimonies for me? Praise God. Uh, I'm going to pick one that was sent on our Melbourne group, and I believe it's, uh, you know, a very good testimony, so I would like to read it. It was posted by Brother Linus. Um, and yes, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, um, there was somebody who was coming in the past couple of uh, last week and uh, about three times um, who was looking for prayers. And while Brother John, while Brother Linus was helping her with the prayer and teaching her how to pray, somebody else, uh, you know, got the healing. So, and she sent the testimony to brother to our Melbourne group I mean brothers posted it so I'm going to read it now because it's truly a beautiful testimony good morning brother my name is Daphne from India I have a testimony to share with you because you were praying for another sister who was going through the same pain praise Jesus this is my testimony of yesterday night which is 26th September 21. It goes like this. I was having a severe pain in my right ear and a leg pain. I've been to the doctor. He asked me to take around 10 tests and the reports were to come today. I was worried and went to sleep with a fear. While I was going to sleep, I prayed to the Holy Spirit, saying, You help me and give me the right scriptures to say. I fell asleep and suddenly woke up around 12.30 a.m. I felt better. There was no pain in my ear and legs. I put on the teaching of Melbourne JCILM. At that very moment, I heard a testimony of a sister who was suffering with the jaw pain. Brother Linus was explaining to her the divine exchange and the scriptures from Mark eleven twenty five. At that moment, I felt I was healed because those who were the same, those were the same words brother was explaining to the sister. He said, don't worry, don't look at the reports, look at Jesus, and I'm healed. I would like to thank all the JC Island warriors for the teachings. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Today, I'm going to the doctor to show the reports. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That is real uh, faith. Many people, uh, this is what happens to a lot of people yeah? when uh, the prayer is being said and they claim it for themselves. Uh, they see the healing taking place in their body as well. Praise Jesus. The, Praise Jesus. Yeah, the effect, the ripple effect of it. Yes, absolutely. And when you are claiming, you know, as you said, you claim the healing. When you are claiming it with faith and you receive it, you know, that's exactly what you will receive, the victory. And you can see here that um, Brother Linus was praying for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was going through the same 
uh, symptoms of what the person was going through on uh, the live Zoom. And uh, praise God for her to receive this miracle and this healing. Yeah. It is truly, yes, truly it's the hand like of the Lord. The, the wisdom key here, your life is whatever you choose to remember. She chose to, uh, I mean, in fact, follow the instruction and remember what Brother Linus was saying. And that's how she saw the healing take place in her body. Praise God. Praise God. And, you know, she had to go and get her reports the next day. And I'm sure there was no fear because she already received a healing. And how beautifully, you know, when you call on, she called on to the Holy Spirit. And she called on in faith. And what she did was she opened her mouth and spoke her faith. She spoke her desire. And that's exactly what's, what happens when you open your mouth, you speak the word, and you believe in your heart. You have to receive, yes, your miracle in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise, yeah. God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So it's your life is whatever you choose and you permit your mind to magnify. So from faith, she decided to have, from fear, she decided to move to faith. And soon as fear walked out, faith walked in and she received her miracle. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So is there any other testimony anybody would like to share? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Is it Jocelyn? Praise God. Is it Jocelyn? Praise God. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, maybe he's busy. So, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, shall we go from uh, where we left yesterday? Yes, praise God. Uh, praise God. Any questions or anything to share before we go? Praise God. No, sister. We did have a discussion, in fact, uh, brother Hector, sister Helen, myself, and there were a few participants as well. We were just, uh, you know, celebrating and thanking the Holy Spirit and thanking you for what a beautiful uh, teaching we had uh, yesterday. Yeah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Okay, so so let's go. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, we saw till uh, 11th verse, right? Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, yeah? Yeah. Eleven verse. Praise God. Even if I give a short teaching and go, you all can discuss, okay? Yes, yeah, yes. Can, yeah, yeah. Okay. Praise God. That's what I say. But, uh... <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah. For even, yeah, we saw, we read all these yellow, but I'll read again. For even that which was made glorious, had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that, okay, you can go to the, you can go to, we'll read from the 8th verse uh, or from the 7th verse. Yeah, so that even those who are, you will have. 
Yes, oh, what language is that? This, this is Bahasa Malaysia. Bahasa. Yes. Bahasa. Okay. Seven plus, yeah. Now we saw, you know, uh, yesterday how the law is the, uh, you know, the law um, is ministration of death. We saw how, you know, we saw in the uh, sixth verse, the letter kills, but uh, spirit gives life. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. Praise God. So yesterday we saw how when Moses brought, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the commandments, which the, the Lord gave the law that was given to him. You know, we saw in the in the Old Testament how his face was shining. We saw it in Exodus uh, 34 uh, from 28 verse we saw. And how glorious it was and people couldn't even see his face. But if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance. So the glory was so much on his skin, on his face, that they couldn't steadfastly behold, they couldn't see, they couldn't look into that glory. And Moses had to put a veil and cover that the people couldn't see the glory on his face. How shall not the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory. Now here, the ministration of condemnation is talking about the law. We saw the ministration of death, the ministration of condemnation. That glory, if you see the seventh verse, the colored one, which glory was to be done away. It's done away. The law is done away. If that law that God gave through Moses, that was ministering death and ministering condemnation, if that was so glorious when, when Moses brought the law, it says, much more, if you see this word, much more, much more. Every time when grace comes, if you notice, even in, in Romans chapter 5, we saw that, much more. Yeah. You know, there is no comparison to, to what grace has done. What grace has done is, it's much more. Much more than what we deserve. It is, it is bigger than, um, you know, the consequences of sin. And uh, uh, what, uh, what grace has brought into our life, there's no compare. Grace has done much more. Much more does the ministration of righteousness exceeds in, in glory. So yesterday we saw uh, the difference between both the covenant, the old and the new, the law and the grace. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God. We, Thank saw, you. we saw how, how the, uh, the grace of God uh, is ministering to us righteousness. The new covenant ministers to us that now we are righteous. We are made righteous. Righteousness means we have the very nature of God. We are the new creation. We are born again. We have the right standing with God. That's who we are. And now, just imagine the glory of uh, God was revealed, uh, you know, on uh, uh, Moses' face. But the scripture says that the glory that we have and the glory that was, you know, revealed in the old covenant, there is no comparison. And, and now where is the glory of God? The glory of God is in us. Yesterday, like how Sister Helen was saying, 
when she used to read about Moses, she used to say, Lord, I want to see that glory. Yeah, sister? Yes, yeah, sister. You used to say that, I want that. Many of us, when we read these Old, uh, old Testament scriptures, we see Elijah, we see uh, Elisha, we see Moses, we see Abraham. And sometimes we think that we are more inferior to them. How many times we think like that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, when we see the Red Sea parting, when we see manna falling, when we see the presence of God like a pillar, when we see, you know, when the glory of God and his face was sh uh, shining, and when we see all these things, we think, wow, what glory, wow. And we think, and we start praying, saying, Lord, I want to see you the way they saw. But we least, we have not understood. We least understood that what they have and what we have no comparison. And that's what it says for if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more do with the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious, even that when the law came, that was so glorious. That was so glorious. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelled. Now, for example, if you have, if you are, if we are in a room, okay, and it's a dark room, and if you put a, a flashlight or a torch light, does the torch light the torch look so bright in the dark? No. In the dark. In the dark. Yeah, the light. It emits light. Yes. It, you can see the light. You can see the flash. Yes. And, and especially if it is if it is put on your face, on your yes. directly on your eyes, it, it is, is it will be too bright, right? That's correct. But if I take the same torch when there is a sunlight, what will happen? It will be lost. The sunlight is very powerful. Yes. Okay, leave the torch light. You, you see the light, the LED light that we put at night, how bright it is. Yes. Now, if I put the same light outside when there is sun, do you think you can see that light? No. No. No matter how powerful, how much, you know, how powerful that light is. If you see the street light, okay, uh, at night, you know, some street lights are so bright. But in the daytime, even if they're on, you can't see them. Yeah. That's what is the comparison. Yes? Yes. The glory was revealed in his face that the people couldn't even look at him. If that old covenant law was, when that law was given, if that was so glorious, now the glory that we have inside of us, that's why the new covenant is the ministration of righteousness, that we have the very nature of God, the glory of God in us, the nature of God in us, the presence of God in us. For if, if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness uh, of speech and not of Moses, which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Can you see that word which is abolished? The law was abolished. And not as Moses. And not as Moses. Now this is talking about the new covenant. The new covenant is not as Moses. Because when the glory was revealed in Moses' face, he had to put a veil over his face. And the Israelites could not steadfastly look to the end of which is abolished. It is, it is not there anymore. Bible makes it very clear. Yes, the law came through Moses. But it is, you know, but we are no longer under the old covenant. We are under the new covenant. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face. 
that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds are minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. Wow. I don't know how many of you understood this. Wow. You know what the scripture is saying? The scripture is saying that, you know, if you see, but their minds, but, but the minds were blinded. Okay. The minds were blinded. The word blind means if you see in the, in the, in the, new, in the new Testament, many times Jesus says, you know, yeah, you have eyes, you can't see, you, you have ears, you can't hear. You know, it is talking about, uh, you know, the inability to, to perceive spiritual things. The inability to understand the truth. And any person who's trying to connect to God through, a, through the law, to the law of Moses, he's blinded. If any person is trying to connect to God through the law of Moses, then there is a veil that he cannot understand the truth. That's what the scripture says. But their, their minds were, were blinded for until this day. It's not talking about that day. Even today, remaineth the same. Until this day remains the same. The same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. If a person is bound to the Old Testament, and as if a person is not able to understand the new covenant, if the person is going through the law and trying to connect to God through the law, then that veil is untaken. And the, and, the, and the mind is blinded and any person who's trying to know God through the law of the old covenant, they, they are, their minds are blinded that they cannot understand the truth. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Isn't the scripture so very clear? Yes. Yeah. Very clear. So true. And, and, and you, you know, can you, sister, can you put this from the 13th verse? Uh, first, let us see AMPC and then let us see TPT because there, you know, the word blind is given even more. It's talking about understanding. AMPC. Yeah, AMPC and then we'll go to TPT. Okay, now. Okay. Nor do we act like Moses. Let me say that again. Nor do we act like Moses. How many times, Sister Helen, when you we're praying, you said, I want to be like Moses. I want to see. But what yeah. does the scripture say? <laughs> Nor do we oh. act like Moses. We don't want the glory to see outside. We should realize the glory is already inside of us. Yes. Nor do we act like Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze upon the finish of the uh, vanishing. vanishing. Splendor. It was splendorous, but it is vanishing. We saw the word abolished in, in KJV. It is abolished. Oh, Splendor, okay. which had been upon two. In fact, now see this. In fact, their minds were grown hard. You know, when you see a person, we, when we see, when we learn about uh, one of uh, my favorite teaching is, uh, topic is uh, hardness of heart. What is hardness of heart? Hardness of heart is when a person so hardened that his heart is insensitive, that he, you know, we just like how we have our physical senses, we all have our spiritual senses. Just like how I use my eyes to see, my ears to hear, I have physical senses to see, hear, understand physical things. God has given us spiritual senses to understand spiritual things. And a person who's hardened is a person, it, he's like spiritually retarded. That he, he's, you know, even though he has the spiritual senses, he doesn't have the ability to understand, see, hear, and understand spiritual things. He's spiritually retarded. His mind is, his heart is hardened. And that's what the scripture says. In fact, their minds were grown hard. And what is that? What is that? C-A-L-L? Kel 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 yes. Mean? Kellos. Kellos. Their Kellos. hearts are hard. 
okay i don't know exact meaning of that but it's talking about the hard and hard in fact their minds they grown hard and callous they had become dull and had lost the power of understanding can you see that yes the meaning of the word blind means it's not talking about physical blindness it's talking about that they lost the power of understanding for so until this day when the old testament the old covenant is being read even today if you go into the old testament the old covenant the law of moses and try to connect to god your eyes is blinded nobody can know him through the law praise god for so until this present day when the old testament the old covenant is being read the same veil still lies on their heart not being lifted to reveal <clears throat> you know there is something that has to be revealed to us we should re- receive a revelation and the, and the law will not give you the revelation the law will blind a person it hinders a person that's why we see in hebrews chapter uh, we can we go to hebrews chapter 11 we'll come back here yeah okay from verse 1 not 11 not 11 1 1 One one, okay. sorry, one one. I'm so used to say eleven, so I said eleven. Yeah, one yeah. one. Okay. First one. Yeah, from word one. In many separate revelation of which set forth a portion of truth, and in different ways God spoke to old. to our forefathers in and by prophets the lord spoke to uh, you know our forefathers how through prophets but see the second verse but in the last in the last of these days he has spoken to us in the person of a son how many of us even now we take we go behind people for the final word many but the scripture says yes in 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 past god spoke through the prophets i'm not saying god is not speaking through his prophets but first yes. of all he's speaking through us through his son through his written word of god he's inside of you he's living in you first of all he's holy spirit is revealing to you through his word maybe he is confirming it through other people you don't need to rely on a prophet you have the holy spirit who's in you let the word of god be the final authority not the person's words but in the last last of these days he he has spoken to to us in the person of a, of a son whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things also by and through whom he created the worlds and the re- and the reaches of space and the ages of time he made produced built operated arranged them in order he is the sole expression of the glory of god now what is this he is the sole expression means what jesus the is the only person soul uh, what is the meaning of the word soul sister christina only only means yes, what only. none of moses nobody no. else represented that's why the law couldn't if you go connect try to connect through the law you will not know that hinders that that blinds a person's mind if you want to know really who god is there is only one person who is expressed many times we get confused and we when we see the old covenant when we don't know how to rightly divide the word the bible says that we have to know how to skillfully rightfully divide the word we we get confused you know there is no one if you know many times we see the old testament and say oh god is angry god oh god is punishing god you take you take it out of the context you will not understand but the bible says very clearly 
if i want to know who abba father is god the father is the only person who has expressed the real god is jesus he is the sole expression nobody nobody if you see judgment that was passed through uh, came through moses he did not reflect he was not the reflection of god the father jesus when jesus came when the when the disciples want to call fire like uh, you know like like in the old testament jesus rebuked it you know why because jesus is the only person who represent, representing the real heart of father nobody else Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, sister. Uh, yeah, thank sister. you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. It's such Praise a beautiful. God. Yeah. yeah it's beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why, you know, uh, uh, can you put this, sister, 2 Timothy 2.15? 2 Timothy 2.15. Yeah. in a and b c okay yeah yeah now see this study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourself to god approved tested by trial a workman who has no cause to be ashamed correctly analyzing and accurately dividing the bible says we are supposed to study so that we have to know how to correctly divide that means if i can correctly divide i can wrongly also divide the word has to, the word of god has to be correctly divide correctly analyzing and accurately divide rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth so that that's the bible tells us to accurately divide yes we should know the distinction between the old covenant and the new covenant we are not supposed to mix them we have to know to accurately divide them and rightly analyze them wow it's so precise yeah yeah so sister. precisely said yes because it can be very misleading sister when we are in the word of god yeah you know where we can um you know not do it accurately as it's mentioning over here yes and because thing, because the old testament uh, yes. you know it blinds the eyes so we yes. try to interpret the bible with the old covenant understanding mm. not yes. knowing that it is done away it is mm-hmm. abolished yes and we try to mix the both and that's Correct. when we we actually we stumble we think even you know we try to do things with our own effort right. and then and then we come to a place nothing is enough i prayed i did this i did this but i feel an emptiness mm. i feel i'm not worthy but unworthiness comes in mm. correct because we are going by our action so true praise god praise so god. study and be ego and do your utmost to present yourself to god approved tested by trial a workman who has no cause to be ashamed correctly analyzing accurately dividing rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word mm. of truth and that's exactly what paul is doing correct he's accurately so is, dividing what does it mean you're yeah, sorry to interrupt sister Yeah. What does it mean when it says that no cause to be ashamed? What does the word ashamed? How does it uh, come? Uh, how is it relevant? Okay. To you know what, what I what I think is, sister, when a person goes uh, into the mindset of uh, law, by default, you know, the guilt comes. Guilt. When okay. Guilt comes, okay. Correct. Correct. That person yes. gets into shame. Yeah. Guilt and condemnation. Correct. Condemnation yes. that leads to shame. correct okay. guilt is when i see when i take the law in my hand uh, the law will never give me the power to fulfill mm. the law because the law is what it is actually the ministration it is the ministry of condemnation no mm correct or is going to minister me condemnation 
so whenever i take the law and try to keep the law if i am trying to teach it nor i am going to try to keep it at one point of time i'll fail and the law will start condemning me because according to the law i can never keep the law and that's when 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 condemnation comes in you did a mistake you did a mistake you did a mistake and then i go to a point where i start seeing myself unworthiness that's why i see two kind of people sister especially when a person goes into the law i see two kind of manifestation one is mm. the person uh, tries to extremely keep the law because that person wants to have right standing based on the performance the person wants to have right standing with god based on his or her performance so when the person misses the mark the person gets into depression into shame mm. into correct shell. correct that is one way of expression i have seen the other way of expression is when the person make, misses the mark that person goes away from god and become extremely rebellious mm, because correct. the person there is no way i can be holy so the person turns away from god so i yeah. see the law will lead a person into shame either into depression or into extreme rebellious and also to an extent when a person is very sincere not understanding grace but really sincere trying to have right standing with god based on the law that person can also go to a place to commit suicide even that can happen the person thinks i am not worthy and yes. that's when the shame comes in and says you did this you did this you did this mm. you are this for this why you had to live finish off your life yeah because of unworthiness correct and that was where there are a lot of cases like that happening sister yeah exactly the condemnation is really i mean mm-hmm. uh, well that's the work of the enemy all the time to make us make sure that we are not with the word of god not the relation to not knowing the uh, word of truth yes yes and that is his end result where he wants to eventually put the person to uh, commit suicide yeah that yes yes yeah. is that the worst form of uh, you know stick getting away from the lord and cutting your separating yourself completely yes yes because condemnation will tell you you're not worthy to be worthy. in the presence of god so it will separate you from god but actually the truth is without the power of god i cannot overcome that sin i need his mercy i need his grace and he's telling a hey, god wants us to go to him when we are when we are weak mm. when we don't have the strength that's when we need him the most praise god thank you jesus thank you sister josephine you know this teachings are truly helping we've never got teachings of such kind anywhere i don't mind seeing it on air praise god praise yeah, thank god thank you jesus correct sister helen Yes, because this is the uh, this is what has been happening all the while, but nobody is seeing it. This yes. is really yeah the absolute uh, un uh, the revealing of the truth or revealing of the lie of the devil. Yes. How? Yeah. That's that's what the gospel does when the gospel is preached. The the devil who is hidden is exposed. What is in darkness comes out. Amen. Yes, Amen. Praise Amen. God. Jesus. So that's that's what we see in Hebrews chapter one, verse three, that Jesus is the only expression of the Father. He is the sole expression. If I want to know God, if I want to know the Father, then I should go and see Jesus. He is the light being. can you see that he yeah. is the sole expression of the glory of god the light being the outraying or the radiance of the divine and this light is in us because christ is in us this glory is in us this radiance of the divine is in us that's why what was shining outside moses is nothing compared to what we have inside of us amen Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now let's come back to uh, where we we were studying uh, on uh, 
2 Corinthians 3, 13. Yeah, we were seeing Amplified, no? Yes. yes. I'm going to go see what I can get this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Okay. In fact, their minds were grown hard and, and uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, calloused. Calloused. Yeah. Calloused. Okay. Yeah, Calloused. Means, okay. It is, uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, we're insensitive, to be insensitive as you write. Insensitive. Uh, correct. Insensitive. Calloused. Okay. Uh, in fact, their minds were grown hard and calloused that they become dull and had lost the power of understanding. For until this day, when the Old Testament, the Old Covenant is being read, the same veil still lies on their heart, not being lifted to reveal that in Christ it is made void and done away. But once we are in Christ, then it is done away, the veil is removed. Yes, down to this very day, down to this very day, down to this very day, let me repeat again, till this very day, down to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies upon their mind and hearts. Wow. Whenever a person is preaching about only about the law and not interpreting it from the, that's why what did Paul say? If there is anybody who's coming and preaching any other gospel other than the gospel of grace, there is a curse upon the person who preaches and receives. Why? Because the, the, the preaching of the law keeps a person veiled. Yes, down to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies upon their mind. That means you can never ever know Jesus nor can you uh, connect to God the Father through the law because the law did not reveal the real expression of the Father Jesus is the only person because Jesus is grace and only through Jesus we can see the Father that's why the scripture says no when we read uh, Luke chapter 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. My God himself has anointed me to preach the gospel. What is the gospel? That is the grace of God to the poor, to set the captives free, to give sight to the blind. You know who are the blind? The blind whose minds are blinded from understanding the real God to knowing him. Can you put that scripture, sister? Uh, Luke chapter 14. Okay. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, the anointed when the Messiah to preach the good news. The gospel is not bad news, good news. It's grace. To the poor. Who's the poor? The one who's captivated. The one who's oppressed. The one who's crushed. The one who's broken. The one's eyes is blinded. Not only blinded by the lies of the devil, but also blinded by the law. Wow. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah, to preach the good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. The preaching of the gospel is what remi removes the veil. Because we saw in the old covenant, just like how there was a veil in Moses' face, there was a veil in the hearts and the mind of the people. And what is going to remove the blindness? What is going to remove the veil? The proclaiming of the gospel, the preaching of the gospel, that is the gospel is the grace of God. The truth is what Jesus did for us on the cross, the Messiah. That is what is going to remove the veil. Praise God. So Sister Jocelyn, so that is exactly what you are doing now, correct? 
that is what the preaching does exactly yes, yes. it removes so the veil yes because that's exactly what's happening now to all of us so that's yes. exactly what you are doing correct sister yes you know oh, sister for a God. long time you know sister Jesus. when i read the so scriptures amazing. when i was seeing the spirit of the lord is upon me my god has anointed me to set the captives free and when i see you know when the yoke of the enemies i i, I understood i was thinking anointing is something to do outside mm. you know you feel something something left you but actually the anointing is when the truth is the anointing is when the truth is revealed the anointing removes the veils and it helps us to see something which we have never seen and understand things earlier i was blinded but now i could see and understand wow and that that removing of the veil comes only through the anointing and the anointing is only through the preaching of the truth that's mm-hmm. why many times our spiritualism is more on emotional feeling feeling high mm-hmm. good Thick, feeling like crying but no understanding of the tribe no matter how much i feel emotionally good i have mm. still the blind that is blinding me the mind is yeah. blinded the heart is blinded i can't see the truth amen wow thank you jesus and for a long time i was thinking why only side to the blind what about the deaf and dumb hmm this is a spiritual blindness spiritual blindness that results in the physical uh, yeah. uh, you know yeah. uh, eyes the receiving sight correct yes. actually this is talking about the sight to the blind means the one who's blinded in the mind in the mind and the heart yes mind and the heart correct and what removes the veil the what gives the liberty what gives the freedom that's what it says no you know a release to the captive and the recovery of sight to the blind to set forth as delivered those who are oppressed who who are uh, downtrodden bruised crushed and broken down by calamity to proclaim the acceptable accepted and acceptable year of the lord the day when salvation and the free favor of god profusely abound amen amen thank you jesus praise the lord thank you jesus hallelujah 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 yes sister you can come back to yeah we are going back again you see that one chapter 2 corinthians 13 sorry 3 3 yes god yeah that in that in that inter correct 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 don't go to 3 3 that you already there okay yes down uh, i'm reading from the 15th verse i'm reading from the 15th verse yes down to this very day whenever moses is read a veil lies upon their minds and hearts but whenever a person turns in repentance to the lord what is repentance repentance is change of thinking change of thinking yeah and what we saw in romans chapter uh, uh, chapter 2 verse 4 romans the goodness of god leads a person to rep- okay i can put that romans chapter 2 uh, no 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 4 2 4 2 i think uh wait wait 24242424 yes yes 24 only sorry sorry four is completely of abraham okay or are you so blind can you see the words blind is coming here wow are you so blind as to as to trifle with yeah. and presume upon and despise underestim the wealth of his kindness and forbearance and long suffering patience are you so unmindful or actually ignorant of the fact that the kindness is intended to lead you to repent see the the the, the old testament law was ministering condemnation not kindness 
it was it was only putting guilt we saw the the, the law was given so that the whole world will come under guilt the law is not going to bring a chained person into repentance it's only going to bring a person into his knees saying lord i can't do this but the real change takes place not through god's wrath but god through god's kindness are you unmindful or actually ignorant of the fact that god's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance to change your mind and inner man to accept god's will amen so what leads a person to repentance god's goodness not my goodness not my works his yeah. works and what what is the gospel the gospel is not what i did but what he did and when i realize his love and what he did for me on the cross and what price he paid that is what is going to bring repentance that i turn away from focusing on my works to what jesus has done for me on the cross yes sister you can come back so the scripture says very clearly what leads a man to repentance the kindness of god the goodness so of god that's so beautiful no sister yeah wow what made what what, what made the sister the prodigal son to repent his wrath yes. father's anger no yeah. father's yeah. goodness yes his love yes his love otherwise i will change my action with fear that is not real change mm-hmm. i'll try to change and please him because he is angry with me praise god thank, thank you god. jesus thank you jesus and that's what it says but but, but uh, yes down to this this very day whenever moses is read a veil lies upon their minds and hearts but whenever a person turns in repentance to the lord the veil is stripped off and taken away now that the lord is the spirit and where the spirit of lord is there is liberty the liberty comes when through the preaching of the gospel amen thank you jesus emancipation from bondage freedom the preaching of the gospel of the truth is what brings the freedom the liberty and god is a spirit he is a person okay praise god now uh, before we come to the 18th verse okay uh, let's let us just go and see tpt and then we'll come back to the uh, 18th verse from the 13th verse we are not like moses who used a veil to hide the glory to keep the israelites from staring at him at the faded uh, uh, and it faded away their minds were closed and hardened for even to this day a same veil comes over their minds when they hear the word of the former covenant even till today when people hear the preaching of the former covenant what comes on them a veil comes on them yes the veil has not yet been lifted from them for it is only eliminated when one is joined to messiah wow mm the veil has not yet been lifted from them for it is only eliminated when one is joined one receives jesus christ as lord god and savior not based on his works but believing truly truly when jesus said i am the way the truth and the life there is no other way yes only believing him not in any other way for it is only eliminated when one is joined to the messiah so until now so until now again and again he's saying until now whenever the old testament is being read 
the same blinding comes on their hearts. But the moment one turns to the Lord with an open heart, the veil is lifted away, lifted, and they see. Only when the veil is lifted, they can see. Now, the Lord I'm referring to is the Holy Spirit. That means in the old covenant, the ministration was based on the law. It was written, the law was telling them, do this, do this, or don't do this. But in the new covenant, it is not the law, but the Holy Spirit who's in us, who's convicting us. What is the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant? Old covenant, they were doing things with their own effort. But now we have the spirit of God who's in us, who's teaching us, who's convicting us. It is the ministration of the Holy Spirit. And we saw Holy Spirit has not to condemn us. He has come to convict us of unbelief. He's not come to say, you didn't do this, you didn't do this. He's come to say us to believe what Jesus did. He has come to convict us that we are righteous, who we are. He has come to convict us to show that the devil is judged. We are not the one who's judged. So in every that's way, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes to minister, that's when the real freedom comes and the veil is removed. Yeah, sister. So then in every area he's coming to tell us, Jesus has done this for you. Jesus has done this for you. Yes. Yes, the love of Jesus coming yes. to show us the love of Jesus. That's why when yes. Jesus came, he started to preach mercy and grace. And the Pharisees mm -hmm. couldn't understand. It looked like he was uh, coming against the law. He was not coming against the law. The, the preaching of God's grace and mercy removed the veil from their eyes. Mm -hmm. And that's so why the were, sinners were drawn to him. Right. Because they were following the law so stringently. Yes. But they were trying to be good outside. But they without, don't yes, know that yes. they cannot make the inside good without the Holy Spirit. Correct. Wow. Now it applies for us more because we are truly walking with the Holy Spirit and because of the Holy Spirit we are uh, yeah. I mean, life, life itself is uh, we it's are alive because us. of Him the dwelling of Him in us yeah. wow so beautiful mm -hmm. praise, God. praise God uh, can, you, can you put Sister Luke uh, 24 44 and 45th verse Luke 24 44-45. Now these are the words of Jesus, okay? 44? Oh, no, no, no. 44-45. Okay. okay. You have put uh, uh, PPT, okay? Yeah, I might. Yeah, I have not read this, but let me see. Okay. Then he said to them, don't you remember the words that I spoke to you when I was still with you? I told you that everything written about me would be fulfilled, including all the prophecies from the law of Moses through the Psalms and the writings of the prophecy that they would all find their fulfillment. He supernaturally unblocked who Jesus he supernaturally unblocked their understanding to receive the revelation of the scripture. Amen. Wow. Fantastic. And that's what happens when the gospel is preached. When the gospel is preached, the Holy Spirit supernaturally unlocks our understanding to, to receive the revelation of the scripture. We need revelation. You just don't take the scripture and give your own interpretation. You need revelation from the Holy Spirit. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to supernaturally unlock. But if you are going to only going to stuck to the old covenant and say this is what it says, the old covenant, even today, if you are going to be stuck to that, it will put a veil on your heart and mind. You will never understand. But if only you allow the Holy Spirit and start reading the gospel, the good news of Christ, and when you start listening to the preaching of the gospel, the grace of God, and that's when Holy Spirit is supernaturally going to unblock your understanding, so that you can receive the revelation of the scripture. Many people try to argue that they, they want to so what about the scripture? What about the scripture? As long yeah. as you want to take the scriptures and argue, you're trying to understand the scripture with your it with your human understanding. Mm -hmm. 
but when yeah. the revelation comes that's when that's why that's why paul says i'm not coming with, to preach with words but i have come to preach with demonstration mm. the gospel of god is the power of god that brings change in people's heart it convicts their heart and that's how the people in the time of jesus their hearts were so convicted then the sinners they came and they repented and their lives started to change and that's what happens when the gospel is preached when the love of god is preached the mercy of god peace because it is the goodness of god that leads people into repentance this jesus this god thank you jesus thank you jesus when the this gospel is, is preached the, you know what has been blocking the the veil that block that veil is supernaturally unblocked yes that is the power of gospel not my power that is the power of gospel no matter whether me if god can use a donkey he can't use me no matter who speaks it it doesn't it doesn't matter in 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 material of who independent of who the person is the gospel has the power to supernaturally un, uh, unlock the understanding amen amen thank you jesus but when the but when the law is being preached no there is mm. going to be a veil the law will never give an understanding to understand to know god so true praise god thank praise you god. thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit the gospel yes, is love is grace what sister no the gospel itself is grace yes the gospel the gospel is equal to good news the gospel we saw no on that day the what paul said the gospel of god the grace of god he interchanges the word correct praise god and you know sister i'm not here yeah. to uh, speak about any other pastor or any other teacher or preacher but the law is still being preached yeah and that's why whenever that's what says no till that's what paul is saying till today whenever it is yes. preached people are going to be blinded yes it's still being mm. preached and and because of the teaching they're so concrete in their blindness as well and, and that's why it takes them time to make the change to be to repent oh so we need if, uh, that's why we need the help of the holy spirit each time we go uh, to preach uh i i i recall uh josephine each time yes. you pray before you teach you're always breaking the spirit of uh, unbelief destroying them unbelief yes. and any any other spirit that is coming to blind our uh our hearts i i noticed that that you do that before you start your preaching so the preaching of the gospel can be uh clearly understood and and not blocked yes yeah not blocked and and easily uh we can all easily make the correction yes spiritualize or open praise god yes praise, praise god. god actually you know what uh, if you see paul when he was saul he was uh, actually inside his heart he was very very zealous and he was he is not a god he is not a person who was against god he loves god even today there are people it's not that they don't it's not that they are purposefully preaching the law no they really they are sincere they are sincere in their love for god they are very sincere they really want to do what god wants them to do but uh, you know if you see saul he had the passion for god but what blinded him was the law mm-hmm. the reason why he came again the christians is the reason is for him according to him it was a genuine reason these people are blaspheming the law that god gave he thought he's doing good according yes. to the law these people have to be killed because they are coming against the law of moses so All he right. was thinking he was right in the eyes of god he did it ignorantly he himself said i did it ignorantly in unbelief he himself that's said the, that yeah that's why the lord chose him sister he yes still, he knew him he knew his heart condition yes he, he did not do purposefully so even today when you see a person is preaching the law that doesn't mean that the person has no love for god no yes that person doesn't know but once the gospel once what happened to saul when he encountered christ i know what i think is 
when he encountered christ he would have had all the questions then what about this what about this because he was a scholar in the law and that's when the lord supernaturally you know i removed you know that you know unblocked the understanding so that he was able to get the interpretation that's why the books of the the letters of paul is so amazing because he already had the law he already had the scriptures but he did not oh. have the interpretation and that's when the holy spirit gave interpretation that's why if you see he's writing about moses he's writing about the actually he's writing the old covenant but he's interpreting the scriptures the revelation which he got through the holy spirit amen amen thank you jesus Fantastic. thank you jesus <clears throat> thank you sister justin Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. <coughs> yeah, sister, we can come we back. Can... Yeah. Yeah, sister, you said something. No, no, I'll be going back, I asked. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we are going back to 2 Corinthians 3. 18. No. You said before 18, we wanted to go there. Yes. Okay. okay, we'll read an AMPC and then you'll come here for 18th verse. Okay, AMPC first. Eh? The, okay. the 18th verse is the masterpiece. <laughs> Every verse yeah, is the masterpiece. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now see this. Wonderful. Uh, shall we go to KJV? KJV, okay. Yeah, 18th verse, yeah. Okay. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of God. Now see this. But we all, with open face, beholding. You know, remember that uh, which verse that talks about uh, behold the face. Uh, uh, it is, I think, 12th verse. Above uh, here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This one? The 11. Oh, no. Or is it, it, it talks one? about behold. They Ah, yes, I think it is uh, 13th verse. I think so, 13th verse, yeah. But their face were binded for until the day remained. Uh, uh, the same will taken, uh, will untaken. No, no, I'm reading the 14th. Okay. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, the children of Israel could not uh, steadfastly look at the end. Now, here we see that the Israelites, they could not see. Correct? Yes. They could not see the glory. They could not see the face. They could not see Moses. But see this 18th verse. But as but, but we all with the open face, not with the veiled face, open face. Means what? There is no more veil between us and God now. That veil that was hindering our hearts and minds are removed. So with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of Lord. Okay, now see this. Here we see the word glass. Can you see as in a glass? Why is that word given as in a glass? Means what? The glass here, as seen in a glass, means it's talking about mirror. Mm. It's talking about the mirror. 
you know the same uh, thing we see in James one twenty three. Can we go to James one twenty three and come back here, please? Yes, yeah. correct, sure. James one twenty three. Yeah, sister. Okay. Now see this. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his face in a glass. That means what? The word of God is a mirror that shows me my reflection. Okay. That, do we see your face in the... Uh, okay, let me ask like this. Have you ever seen your face? Yes. No. Only in the mirror. <laughs> uh, only in the mirror. Yes, through the mirror, I meant. <laughs> <laughs> we see the reflection, not our face. Correct? Yes. Correct. Yes, Correct. yes. yes. Have, have your eyes came popped out and it turned and saw your face? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Praise God. Yes. So I have not seen my face, but I see my reflection. reflection. Okay, let me ask me let let me ask the question. Have you ever doubted what if this mirror is not showing exactly how I look? How do I know I've never seen me? Mm. I am True. trusting the mirror more than I trust the word of God. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> because True. when the mirror says there is something black. On my face, I wipe it because I believe what it says. <laughs> and even though I have not seen my face whole, whole, I, my whole life, I've never seen me. I've only seen my reflection, but yet I choose to believe what the mirror says because I trained my mind to believe the reflection. Please go. If the natural mirror can show my reflection, the written word of God shows us our real reflection, who we are in our spirit. Wow. <clears throat> and that's why you know I'll come back sister the 18th verse okay. but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord Now, we have the word of God, and that's the mirror, that's the glass, that reveals us the glory of the Lord. It's not hidden, it reveals. Now, and changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Now go to uh, AMP system, AMPC. Praise God. Here it is given. And all of us with an un unveiled face, because we continue to behold the word of the Lord as a mirror. Here it is given clearly. What is the mirror? God's word is the mirror. God's word, yes. It shows me who I am in the spirit. And all of us, as with Unveiled face because we continue to behold that word. No, continue to behold, continue to behold. That's a problem. We behold, we, we look into the mirror, but do we continue? That's what the Bible talks about. We have to abide in His word, we have to dwell in Him. That's why the Bible says we have to be. You know, when Jesus spoke to the, spoke to the Jews who believed, He said, If you continue in my word. Now, why is he saying that? You know why he's saying? Because even though the glory is in me, the real change that has taken place inside of me, it has to be taken place outside. There should be a transformation, a change that also have to take place outside. That's what it says, you know, and all of us with uh, as with unveiled face, 
because we continue to be hold in the word of god as in a mirror the glory of the lord are continually being transfigured into his very own image in every increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another from this comes from the from the lord who is the spirit okay can you put uh, ppt sister okay we can we uh, we can all draw close to him with the veil removed from our faces and with no veil we all become like mirrors who brightly reflect the glory of the lord jesus we are being transfigured into his very image as we move from one more uh, from one brighter level to another uh, to sorry uh, from one brighter level of glory to another and this glorious transfiguration comes from the lord who is the spirit praise god thank you jesus okay hallelujah now where is this glory we should first as, as i told you already you can come to gate here sister as as we already saw that the mirror is actually going to show me the reflection of who is in me correct and where is this glory this glory is in us i'll show you scripture you know that's why there is there is, we, we don't speak without evidence now let's go to colossians 127 to whom god would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the gentile to whom god would make known what is the riches of the glory of this this mystery among the gentiles and what is the glory which is christ in you the hope of you can you see wow yes where is christ in me so what happens when i take the word of god the mirror that that mirror shows me christ and this christ is where in me where is this glory in me are you understand yes Yes. Okay. Now go back again, sister, to the to the eighteenth verse. Okay. Now eighteenth verse. Not James. Two Corinthians. Yeah. Okay. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. but we all with open faces beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord are changed into the same image now if you see that word change the word change is talking about it is it is talking about transformation transformed it is it's speaking of a complete transformation just like how a caterpillar transform into a butterfly now what happens is as we turn our hearts from condemnation of the law to righteousness how how do we turn through the grace of christ that's when the transformation that has taken place in our spirit will also begin to transform in our mind that's why we have to continually look into the mirror 
to change our thinking according to the change in the spirit now as i told as we saw this christ is in us but the problem is where is my focus on where is my mind on because how a man thinks so is he correct yes. carnally minded is equals to death but spiritually minded is life and peace peace so even though i have god spirit in me even though the glory is in me for me to experience the glory i have to take the mirror and i have to continuously focus into the mirror look into the mirror beholding as in the mirror and that's when the glory which is in me begin to reflect the inner glory begins to reflect outside according to the renewal of my mind amen that's amen. when i begin to walk from glory to glory it it is based on how much i'm focusing into the mirror that's why we saw continually we saw that word in ampc we have to continue to behold we have to look into the mirror we have to, we are not supposed to look into our failure we are not supposed to look into our weakness we are not supposed to if i tell you know don't look back don't look back don't look back what will come you want to look back mm. but the scripture says now as you, as we has as our, our eyes are unveiled as the gospel has unveiled our mind now we can understand the scripture we have to continually that's what it says because we continue to be hold in the word into the mirror and that's when the glory that is in us will will begin to reflect praise and god and that's what and that's exactly what romans 12:2 says what romans mm. 12:2 says do not be conformed to this okay. world okay. but you be transformed you see that word transfigure transform change these are the words yes. we saw in the 18th verse in the different translation once in right. in kgv we saw change in ampc we saw transfigured now that is exactly what romans 12:2 says what is this transform in a spirit we are changed but not in our mind not in the physical but the more we look into the mirror that's what we saw in james 1:23 a person who looks into the, just like how he looks into the glass you have to look in the mirror continually and the more we look into the mirror the more that's why the scripture says looking unto jesus the more we see him the more we focus on him the more we focus on his love what happens do not be conformed to this world but you be transform and how does the transformation takes place the transformation takes place by the renewal of the mind and that's what the 18th verse says the more we look into the mirror and the more we focus that word of god that glory that is in us it's it will start reflecting outside mm. wow thank you jesus continually focusing our attention on our failure will cause us to fail but continuously focusing on christ will cause us to produce a lifestyle that is like christ and that's when the glory of god which is in us will begin to shine outside amen thank you jesus so that's how we become just like christ correct yes. so we carry the nature of him and that reflection automatically yes. is on the outside as well Yes, Because but where are we looking for the glory yeah. in the heaven? We are looking for yeah. glory to come like from the cloud. Fall But we don't know the glory is in us and we have yeah. to focus into the mirror. We have to look into the reflection. The mirror shows who I am, what I am. And I have so to look have into to that. And the more I look into that and the more I change my thinking, the more the glory that is in me will begin, begins to reflect outside. And that's when the glory of God is revealed. Yes. That's why we have to continually keep ourselves on the word. Yeah. Continue because that's the mirror. Yes. Yeah. Because that will unveil um, the blindness. The blindness. The hinder- that 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 was that was hindering us from seeing hindering, the light. Yes. Yes. Wow. Hmm. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
So, praise God. Praise God. I think we almost uh, studied this whole chapter only. Two Corinthians. Yes. Three. Yes. Wow. <laughs> That's so beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. You finished it on time as well. <laughs> yeah. And we did so many <laughs> scriptures. You took so many parallel. Uh, yeah. And you did so many comparisons. Examples that were so good. You know, everywhere. Wow. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So, Jesus. praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Bad in it. Anybody has any questions from the participants who would like to share anything regarding the teaching? Praise God. Poor brother Hector's there. Sorry, yeah. just seeing you, brother. Sister Jocelyn. Yeah, yeah. brother. Yes, seeing you, brother. Praise God. Praise God, brother. Praise God, brother Hector. This book is so bright. <laughs> God. It's shining now. <laughs> There is the glory of God reflected only by the words that came out of your mouth from the Holy Spirit. Oh, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, I must confess, I think Sister Christina said the same thing about uh, other pastors and preachers. I have a tremendous esteem and rating for you, Sister. Yes. And I think, and I believe that the power that is in you is the humility that you have. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God uses the weak. He uses the, the downtrodden, the ones who... He, he didn't call the, 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 uh, the qualified. Yeah. You when know? I'm asking for the pronunciation, you come to know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but he qualified the call. Yeah, praise mm. <laughs> God. He actually, brother, it is he is the same God in in every one of us. Again, yes. it is yes, yes. yes. It, it, it is how much the veil is removed. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And you know, uh, there's there's so much there's so much that I've been taking down notes and uh, not able to catch up really because I need to listen to this again. And again, yes, yes. to start from, I just wanted to say, I don't know if you were preaching to us here or you're, or you're preaching to the Jews. <laughs> because, because this whole thing about the Old Testament and the New Testament and Jesus coming to interpret exactly what it's all about. All these letters that were written were addressed to the to the Israelites, to the Jews. Yeah. And as you rightly said, if there was one thing why God, Jesus picked Saul, is because of his genuine love for God. Mm. And he knew that if he only knows the right thing, if that veil is removed from him, yeah. he will be my man. Yeah. And that is what has happened. And I even that look for where he says, that uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to set the captives free and to set the oppressed go free. Who are the mm. captives? Mm. All along I was thinking, you know, it's us who are captives. He was mentioned, I believe, this is my sharing sister. I'm mm. correction. This was meant for the, sadly, that is why he said, oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, if only you knew. He cried, he wept over them. Because they are the chosen ones, but yet they didn't know the truth. Yeah. Set them free from the curse of the law. They were bound by the law. He brought grace. And it only had to take his death to split that veil from top to bottom. So that we can have direct access to him. Exactly, and yes. Every scripture that you have given here, Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's worth its weight in gold. It's so beautifully explained. Mm. If we it's could go through all those scriptures, you connected them so, so very well. What comparables? Yeah, exactly. 
That is why I said this room has become so bright. It was, it's the Shekinah glory that has come from the words of your mouth, which is given by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. Sister, I am lost for words. I am lost for words, but I can only say I wish I could. I, I, I just want to, to dive into this, remain there and keep. But then again, it is the Spirit of the Lord that says, I call you not to sit and listen. And just If you got this, go and tell the other. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Correct. That's where it is completed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Lord, I appreciate you. You love God. You stay where you are. She said, I, I have chosen you. I have chosen, I have chosen him. And he knows how much he's going to suffer for my sake. So that's a clear indication that the gospel is in our in our life today by the by the ridicule, the sufferings, the insults we get. Mm. That is what Jesus faced. Mm. Yes. Oh, this teaching can go on and on. I know. But what you've given us uh pearls, gems. Yes. My goodness. I've lost the word, sister. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Even that uh, to the apostles, on the, I love that, on their way to Emmaus. He says, oh, yeah. you are slow to understand. Having the prophets and the Psalms and all spoken about me, this lifting of the veil, I believe, that Jesus was there in the Old Testament and they couldn't see it. That is why he said, uh, before Abraham was, I was. Yeah. Yes. And they couldn't understand it. Neither did I till, <laughs> till the Holy Spirit delivered it to me today and in, in all these talks. Praise God. Praise God. Is uh, someone raising hands, Brother Hector? Oh. Millie, no, that's uh, not. Millie. Sister Millie, praise God. Praise God. Um, Praise God. God. Praise God, Sister Jocelyn, how are you? Praise God. Uh, is, it the, is it okay if I can share a small testimony of myself? Yes, yes. And, yes sister. Um, Praise God. I always listen to most of uh, the Sunday healings with you, Sister Jocelyn. Okay. Um, so this small testimony is how the word of God changed my for the start, it's Monday, but then from now on, my life. Um, I'm always a person that usually worries and I'm quite anxious about things. So my fifth little baby, his name is Emmanuel. Um, he is eight months old. He was born with certain old conditions that the doctors has said for him, which I understand from the, listening to the word of God that I shouldn't be proclaiming what the enemy has told about him. So this little baby of mine, he's had um, four brain surgeries. The last surgery was um, a month ago, two surgeries, he had revision of the shunt. And then this last Sunday, again, he started showing symptoms that his shunt wasn't functioning well. Not his shunt, the shunt. The shunt wasn't uh, functioning well. But I knew where I have to be rooted in I'm a nurse as well, so my medical knowledge is also up there. My reasoning, okay. my cognition is all overtook my faith earlier on, but I know that's all lies. Mm. So I was listening to the Sunday um, early morning breakfast with Melbourne. Um, and then um, it was Brother Linus speaking to a lady, uh, God of love. Mm. And he talked about the divine exchange, that she should listen to the divine exchange YouTube that was uh, done by yourself by the grace of God and then I opened up the Bible and I said Lord you speak to me I, I know this is this is what's happening but I need to stay rooted in my faith I don't want to be thinking about all the other things and then the Lord spoke to me through Psalms 42 verses uh, 11 saying why am I so sad why am I so troubled I will put my hope in God and once again, I will praise him, my savior and my God. Mm -hmm. To that very day, I didn't even know a verse like this existed in the Bible. So mm -hmm. listening to that, 
I felt a lot of hope in myself. And the whole day, I just immersed and soaked myself listening to the divine exchange, the talk. Mm -hmm. Because I knew my Lord is telling again through Psalms 46 that I need to be still. And the Lord will do the rest. So by being still for a person like me, physically is possible. But I struggle a lot with these thoughts, the worries, the anxieties, which I know is not from the kingdom of God now. So I use the word of God to fight those worries. And each time a worry would come, I would counterpart it with the word of God and that God is love. He is in complete control. So as the events progressed that day, my baby did end up going to the hospital. He did end up having a brain surgery at one in the morning. Um, it was an emergency. So I came back home. My husband was with my baby because I have all the four children at home. In the middle of the night, again, this worry and anxiety caught me up again. And then the spirit inside me reminded me again of Psalms verses 23. Even if I go through the deepest darkness, my Lord is going to be with me always. His staff and Lord protect me. So I kept again reciting the same Bible verse again and again. And that brought me a lot of peace in my heart and patience mm -hmm. and in prayer. So this whole hospital admission, he came back home last night. It was very, very different from the previous hospital admissions that he's had. Mm -hmm. So the more I come into the word of God, I keep listening to this. That's the only way I can fight the evil one was just immersing and soaking myself in all the teachings. And I'm in love with the Bible now. The more I read the Bible, especially the New Testament, the more I can feel the spirit in me talking, communicating. I think, um, I think that's about it for, my, for now. <laughs> yes, God. Sister, you, I know uh, you can also get into, there's so many healings testimonies and uh, yeah, you know you can go and see the testimonies especially the process how they fought the battle and how they saw miraculous uh, you know victory and healing uh, you know that will help you to practically apply you know there is something the scripture says resist the devil and he flees from you hmm. submit to the lord resist the devil and he flee so there is something called resisting there, there are times, yes, there is time I have to meditate, I have to praise, that is 24 by 7, I'm not saying no, but there are times that I have to resist, I have to speak to the, I have to speak to the mountain, I have to speak to the demonic spirit, I have to be, I'm not supposed to be passive, there are times that I have to use my anger, not on people, but on the demonic spirit, that spirit of infirmity, so yes. that's why. Uh, you know, sister, go into the uh, testimonies and teachings and uh, go to the Sunday, Saturday, Sunday to see children coming and teaching and healing. You know, uh, I would recommend you to go and listen uh, to those uh, teachings where you will know how uh, not how to speak to this, uh, the infirmity, uh, speak to the problem and not speak what you see, but speak the, 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 the word of God speak healing because jesus is not going to heal your son he has already healed 1 peter 2 24 says by his by his wounds you were healed it doesn't say you will be healed you were healed he sent his word and he healed the sick yes sister i always listen and i did and i the rebuking was also there the whole day on sunday okay. a day okay. that uh, what is yeah. Every day we are in the battlefield, but Sunday was the day that I could feel it a bit more harder because of um, all things happening. But I knew where I had to stand and what I had to use as my armor, um, as okay. you all know, in efficiency. And I attend the children's, um, okay. and I've got children as well, so I also tell them. And I took that as well for me. I am the one who has to change. I think I attended on, on Monday morning and from um, this Melbourne breakfast club about sister Helen and sister Christina talking about how they changed and the word of God changed their children. It's the same thing I'm trying from now onwards. I mean, from Monday onwards, I've got to be more in word of God and the word of God will change because I cannot change anybody, Amen. but the word of the Lord can change. What is your son's name, sister? Emmanuel. I spoke to you two times, but Emmanuel, if you don't, I don't know if you speak to so many people. Um, yes, he is Emmanuel. 
Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you, Father, that Emmanuel is completely healed. Thank you, Jesus, by your wounds, that he is set free. In the name of Jesus, I find every spirit of infirmity, every sickness, I command you to leave this body. I speak right now to every sickness to die from the root in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for brand new brain. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for brand new brain and brand new organs, Lord. Thank you, Father, that Emmanuel is completely healed by the wounds of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the surgery, the supernatural surgery right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the Lord who gives life to the dead. Yes, Lord. I speak, I, I release the same life into him. I speak life into his body. I speak life into his brain. I speak life into his cells. I speak life into his tissues. Emmanuel is the body of Christ. Satan's sickness has no power, no place over him. And Emmanuel is completely healed. He is a man of God. He is a prophet. He is proclaiming the word. With signs, wonders, and miracles. He's a threat to the kingdom of God. And thank you, Lord, that so many souls are saved through Emmanuel. In Jesus' name, we believe God. Amen. Thank Let's you. Pray. Praise the Lord. I have written it up in a prayer next to his bed. He sleeps in his court. I've written up the prayer Spirit of the Most High is upon Emmanuel. God has anointed Emmanuel to preach the gospel to the poor. God Amen. has to this world to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to sit at liberty those who are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Emmanuel is the body and temple of Christ. Satan has no authority over Emmanuel. I've written it up and I've kept it in his court. And when of my children come, I tell them as well to always keep saying this. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. That's wonderful. Praise God. Amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And we, and we will uh, see and hear and, uh, uh, you know, who knows? Days are going to come that I will be listening to this preaching. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank Amen. You. Thank you, sister. Yeah, brother Hector, you want to say something? No, I second that. I agree to that. Uh, yes. Sister. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord, with us. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Praise God, sister Helen, sister Christina. Praise God, sister Jocelyn. Praise God. <laughs> so, so beautiful. Thank you for this wonderful teaching. Wow. Thank you. Holy Amen. Amen. Okay, then. So... Shall I take your leave? Yeah. Yes, you can. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus loves you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Sister Jocelyn. God bless you. And Thank you so the- much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Um, Sister Christina. Samia, praise God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Shall we uh, yes. find out? Or? Yes, yes, we wind up. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Do you want to do the closing prayer? Sorry, you want to do it? Okay. You want me to do it, sister? Uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Please. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father, as we come into your presence again this morning. But this great opportunity that you give us every single day, Lord, to fellowship with you, to be in your presence, to experience you, to experience the love that you have for us, for the teachings that we get every single day, for the beautiful sharings that happen right up from the, from the night till we come into the morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord, that the glory of God is in each one of us. Thank you, Jesus, that we know and we know that we are a new creation and righteous of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord, we understand now that we are glorious and that the glory we have inside of us is enormous. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we are no more under the old covenant and the law, but under the new covenant and by grace, through grace. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, you are the only one and only expression of God that we have. And we know now that we are all radiant. The radiance of glory lies in each one of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord, you are grace and only through you that we can see the Father and experience his love through you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that the veil is removed. I believe so this morning. Through the teaching and preaching of our beloved and most loved sister, Jocelyn. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So many truths have been revealed. And the spiritual blindness no more exists, Lord. It's all restored. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, it is your goodness and kindness that we have and what you did on the cross. On our behalf, we thank you, Jesus. You paid a huge ransom for it. And now we understand and we know and we know that the love that you have for us. We come in utmost repentance for anything that we have done knowingly and unknowingly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting each one of us here on this platform who are listening through YouTube and who will listen tomorrow and for the years to come for accepting us just the way we are. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us everything. We have it on the platter now. Through all these teachings, Lord, you've made so much known to us. We have much, much more than we even thought we did. Thank you, Jesus. We come to you now, Lord, with open hearts. And our spiritual eyes are open as we keep nourishing ourselves through the word of God, which is our mirror, and we continue and continue in it. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us and convicting us and showing us and telling us about the love of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Son, and we thank you, Holy Spirit. As we leave this breakfast table, taking all the truths, all the jewels, all the secrets, and the mysteries that have been revealed this morning to the teaching. It is all fallen on good, good soil. And as we meditate and go back into the teaching and learn and study and apply it, yes, Lord, we are called to preach the good news so we know our assignment and our purpose. We take it outside to whoever we meet and bring more and more souls to your kingdom. You deserve all the glory and honor. You are a good God. We love you. 
We adore you. We praise you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It was a beautiful prayer, Sister Christina. Praise God, Sister. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sister Helen. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Hector.